Here we go. Here goes nothing. <laughs> oh, okay. Am I ever afraid on the road? And I wanted to address this two reasons because it's relevant in today's society and I know that there's been some top hot topics on YouTube related to van life safety as a female traveling alone. I've been on the road for two years. Have I ever feared for my life? No. Ha have I ever felt unsafe? Yes. Has it ever caused me to reevaluate what I'm doing living the van life? No. I can only think of one time where things were a little sketchy or shady. And I addressed this previously in another video, but I was in New Mexico, northern, uh, kind of near Santa Fe in the National Forest. However, the campsite that I intended to go to was high up on a mountain and it was it was it was too much and so I just turned around and decided you know what it's a long day I'm gonna stay at the, the foothill of the mountain uh, it was like a staging area for like ATVs you know so it wasn't a parking lot but it was like a, just a gravel spot there's a lot of trash there's a dead dog carcass rotting and it was awful but you know what I'm just gonna stay here for a night and I'm gonna get up and leave in the morning and find another place and so I was going to do that. I had no issues. I had some people that were that came and unloaded their ATVs. Not a big deal. So, well, mind you, this was a Friday night, and it was a small town. So, sometime after midnight, a a pickup truck drove by, and then eventually parked right behind me. Like I'm not talking about they just parked behind. No, they parked right behind me. There was plenty of other space for them to park. But he parked right on my tail. He had his lights shining into my back window, which is my bed, my bedroom. And he just kept the lights on. I don't recall if his engine was running at this point or if he turned it off. I do believe I heard they were playing the stereo. So I don't know if it was just some teenagers having fun, if they wanted to scare me, or if it was two kids making out, or if they just, I don't know. And I wasn't about to find out. So after, you know, I think maybe a couple minutes passed, and I'm in my PJs at this point, I grabbed my keys, I secured what I could at that moment and jumped into the front seat, put the keys into the ignition, and drove off. Uh, I typically don't like to drive at night. Um, my eyesight gets worse at night. I mean, I do have eyeglasses, but just as a safety precaution, I've driven at night and had deer hit me, so it's just not, it's not fun. But I drove, they didn't follow me or anything, um, and I drove and parked um, at one of those parking areas. Par it's not a rest stop, but it's just a parking area in New Mexico on the side of the road where all the truck truckers park. And I was fine. The whole notion that women should fear for their safety on the road while they're traveling is, to me, is nonsense. Now, hold on. That is not to say that you shouldn't be aware of your surroundings at all times. If you are cognizant of what you're doing, where you are, what your escape route is, don't block yourself in and don't allow someone else to block you in, make it so that you can turn the key in the ignition and leave whenever you want. And that might mean putting up your camp chair, putting up your solar panels, which I have had to do just in case. 
right? Um, so, but I want to say, if you are van dwelling in the city, in any city, or if you are stealth camping, for whatever reason you feel the need to stealth camp, there's a reason that you feel that you need to, and therefore you might want to be a little bit more alert. But for me, I I boondock in campgrounds, campsites, I, uh, public lands. So, for the most part. So for me, safety has never been an issue. Now that is not to say that it can't be. I'm not saying I'm never going to be a victim. That's That's naive to think of. But to have this victim mentality everywhere you go like you're to me it's like you're inviting it I think if you walk around if, if like for instance I was at Walmart and I was actually camping next to a friend and I was coming out of the Walmart and I had groceries and this was this was a little bit after sunset and so it was getting dark and this guy approached me while I was had my van door open and I was trying to load my groceries in, he approached me and I'm like, no, stop. He was about 20 or 30 feet. And I said, stop, don't come any further. I don't want whatever it is that you're selling, if you're selling anything, I am a female and I don't appreciate you approaching me in the parking lot. Because that's where a lot of abdu ab abductions happen. So don't be afraid to be assertive. Don't be afraid to say, look, I'm not I'm not having this you may be the nicest guy in the world but you have to understand approaching me in this position is is making me vulnerable and that is not something a woman wants to feel ever <laughs> unless she's in love of course which is a whole different topic so I feel like I'm gonna get a lot of flack for making this but I'm just speaking from personal experience and you also need to know your rights if someone's really hassling you Turn them in. I think this also is in part, uh, in part due to the fear mongering that's going on in our society. I think we all just need to stop watching the news, number one. Uh, number two, don't believe everything you hear and read just because it's on the news or just because it's on some credible news source doesn't mean that it's true. There are people out there that have agendas. A lot of it's propaganda. I'm sorry, that's my belief. And if you don't believe that, if you think everything that the news reports is 100% valid, I mean, that's your prerogative. But I'm, I don't intend to live my life in fear. I don't. If I did, I wouldn't have ever chosen this lifestyle okay this this is way too long I, I mean I could go further 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 but I won't <laughs> I'm just I'll stop right there okay question number two I should have led with that how did Dresden get his name um, Dresden got his name from in my former career at the time, I was doing computer-aided drafting and design, and my coworker was a project engineer on this project that we were all working on for the city of Dresden, Ohio. We uh, engineered and manufactured combustion control parts for power plants. While we were working on this project, she told me she knew that I had a cat, and she said, do you want another cat? And I said, no. I said, I really don't, I just want to have the one. And so she said, well, I have this kitten and I don't think we can keep him because I have dogs and my toddler, blah, blah, blah. So I said, no, I really, I really don't need a kitten. I mean, I just, I've had, I just got this cat and she's just settling in and I kept telling her no, right? And she wouldn't take no for an answer. So one day after work, she brought this cat up. He was a kitten. I don't know how many weeks old he was, but you've seen the pictures. She brought the cat to work in this little plastic, it was either pink or purple crate from one of her daughter's stuffed animals. It was the cutest thing because it wasn't a real pet crate. It was a fake one. And then he 
just poked his little black paw out of one of the holes. And at that point, I was like, okay, fine. And, you know, I just, my heart melted. And she knew that. She, knows, she knew what she was doing. And, you know, I, I took him home and me and my uh, boyfriend at the time were trying to figure out what name we wanted to give him. And at the time, we were kind of like into the goth scene. <laughs> we wore a lot of black. And The Crow was one of our favorite movies. This was in 2001, people, okay? And so he wanted to name him Draven from Eric Draven from The Crow. And I'm like, no, that is, no, that's too goth. That's, I have to draw the line somewhere. I mean, he's a black cat as it is, right? So I thought, well, why not name him Dresden? And so Dresden, Dresden for short, makes sense, right? So that's how Dresden got his name. And every, often people are like, Justin? Dr oh, no, Dresden, like the, the bombing in Germany. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, question number three. Uh, how do I fund my travels? I have primarily relied on my savings. <clears throat> when I lived in Dallas, I, I had a really good job. Um, and I had seniority. And I mean, I worked there for 19 years. And I had a bachelor's degree. And so I was compensated pretty well. And I saved some of that money. I also sold almost everything I own, which isn't much, but, um, and the things that I didn't sell, I are, are with family. The only job that I've had in the two years that I've been on the road is at, when I, w when I went home last winter in Texas, fall, winter, and worked that seasonal job in retail. Other than that, at first, when I hit the road, I wanted to do kind of like uh, work camping jobs, like Becky Shade from Interstellar Orchard. Uh, she's a great resource, by the way, if you're just looking into getting out on the road. She's a wealth of information. Her website, her books, awesome. Hi, Becky. <laughs> um, but. I wanted to do what she did, but I found it challenging because the, some of the camper jobs where they pay for your campsite and then you go to work, some of those weren't ideal and I have a pet. And she doesn't have a pet, so that was kind of an issue. A lot of the jobs that I wanted had dormitory housing only. Obviously that's not going to work, I have a pet. Um, I was actually thinking of working Amazon this season. Um, I put in my application and I was like, uh, do I want to do this? I don't know. So I talked myself out of it. It'll be there next year if I really need it, right? But I'm, so my thought process was if I'm ever going to get clients so that I can have this ability to freelance and make money on the road, I have to start. I can't keep putting it off. And so I've been working on that and um, while I've been doing these house sits, so it's just a slow process. So does that answer your question? I hope so. And the last one that I want to cover, I don't want this video to be too long and I feel like it already is. Do I get lonely out on the road? Oh my gosh, yes. And I think that was probably the number one reason why I would wake up some days. You know how some days are better than others. There were some days where I'd wake up and I just felt very emotional. I couldn't stop crying and I just wanted to be with my friends. I miss my friends. I miss them all the time, but there are certain times on the road where it's like, God, I just, I want to hug my best friend right now. I want to hug my mom, you know? <sighs> don't cry, Angela, don't cry. And I think part of that is due to my age and single, no children, just having, you have this small group of people that you love and trust. And if they're not there physically, 
it's it's draining it really is it's emotionally draining um, you know phone calls just don't cut it and also do I do I want a companion do I want a partner yeah 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 I do not only is it more exciting and it's more fun on the road when you're sharing it it's it's easier because you have another person to bounce ideas off whether this is a lover or just a friend it's it's easy to say hey what do you think about this or oh my gosh I'm having this problem can you help me out with it that's me I do that a lot <laughs> um, so yeah whether you are traveling with your partner or your friends or a tribe I think to to start things off if you're if you're scared about going this alone, I think that's a great opportunity. Find someone that you can travel with. And I think that that's the number one thing that made me almost quit, is being so alone all the time and having to rely on myself. But that's the thing, guys. I have been independent, relying on myself for a long time. I've been single for, well, off and on, but, you know, I'm used to being alone is what I'm trying to say and so and I'm an introvert too and so you know when I was preparing for this journey I didn't think that being lonely would really hit me because I'm just so used to it but when you're out of your comfort zone and you're exploring new places and this is a new kind of life and transition for you it can be rough at first so be patient with yourself and just try to take it one day at a time. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else, how else I could try to make it better or give you sound advice. I mean, I'm definitely not a pro. I still feel like I'm learning. I mean, it's only been two years. It's, I feel like I have so much more to learn and I'm learning new things all the time, especially with my RV and, and learning things about myself. So it's that but you know that's part of the process and that's part of the the journey and that's what makes it fun right so the mosquitoes are out and it's almost six o'clock here in Georgia so I'm gonna wrap this up and I hope you've enjoyed it I hope you got something out of it and if you think I'm full of then leave me a comment and let me know that's fine. I can take constructive criticism. What I don't like is when you're just name calling like a child. That's one thing that serves no purpose, you know? So if you want to let me know how you feel, that's fine. Just be nice about it, that's all. Is that so hard? Okay, that's all I got. Bye-bye.